hi everyone and welcome back and in this video we are going to talk about how the code review should be done for senior developers so let's say uh, you are a senior developer in your team and uh, you might be doing some code reviews so what are the the points which you should look for before reviewing the code so i'm going to highlight some of them first of all the code should work all the test cases should be passing uh, the project status should be included based on what feature you have added and is that feature really working uh, code is written uh, with following all the standard and guidelines you have uh, put in place for React, Svelte or maybe for component based approach. Code is in sync with the whatever the pattern and technology you, you have specified. It should not be duplicate code. The types and whatever should be specified properly if it is a TypeScript. All the function classes components should be small. Event listeners should be removed to avoid any memory leaps, leaks. Naming conventions should be followed. Either you use a sneak case, camel case. It should be standard uh, everywhere. Even for the table name, collection names, class names, variable names, function names. Unused package should not be there and separation of concern and all. Then code style which is mostly managed when, uh, done by the ESLint we have. All the ES6 features are there, right? Obviously you won't be writing callbacks if there is a promise and async await. You should be focusing on that. You would be using destructuring if you wanted to extract any particular property from the object. You can use the default values instead of initializing the values inside a function. You would be using arrow function instead of uh, assigning this to that. This we were doing earlier or doing a dot byte. So you can use arrow function. Doing a proper import export, uh, importing and exporting only the required things. So all those things are uh, really required when you are doing the code review. Apart from that. So what is the other important aspects when you are doing code review is the, the code statements because your code review will be a good code review if you are giving a feedback to your junior developer or the, the colleague in the team while doing a peer, peer review is the code comments because sometimes there is a PR MRs are very big and you might be writing some language which is really not colleague friendly right. So I will just talk about some sample examples like how you should do it and how you should not do it. Let's say here I'm doing something which is not right. So the code looks correct to me. Uh, here I'm doing some kind of uh, creating a swagger documentation for my APIs. But here you can see I'm trying to hard code the username uh, hello and the password hello right. So what kind of comment I can write. So these comments whatever you're writing should be uh proper it should not be like offending that uh, person who who has already written this code uh, make it uh, feel it differently so i will talk about some example so let's say i'm just talking random examples which are not related to this code instead of calling this what do you think if i if you add this syntax if this line something like this it gives a really a good impression that you are a senior developer and you are giving some suggestion to the junior developer right and similarly other liners like uh, instead of doing this saying something like you did not close the socket connection here i mean here you are actually targeting and pinpointing someone who has written this code and you are, you may not be sure that if it is a code written by that person okay so instead of doing this this code does not close a socket connection this feels more peer friendly instead of uh, putting something like okay you, you did not close the socket connections and it's not good right similarly example uh, instead of saying something like this okay this code is too hard to maintain you can just uh, make it as something like it's hard for me to understand the code I'm just giving you one liners because these, these these will improve your code reviewing practice. Okay, it's hard for me to understand the code. It's only the English verbs or English language we are putting here and uh, that will make uh, your review better. I mean, obviously, uh, the, the, the person who has written the code needs to fix it. But the message you are giving is really clear. So, I mean, you should not put no sarcasm, no uh, condemning word or something like this. Uh, if you saw something like this, I'm just putting these uh, simple liners. Okay, why don't you just write a CSS in separate file? So here, instead of this, 
you could you could have said the same statement in just on the same language but something like this you should have written the CSS file in separate file this feels far more better than whatever you are saying here right you can uh, use uh, emojis also in your code to make it more uh, friendly right and uh, you can also put more uh, explanation about your uh, comment which you have just added so something like this uh, here let's say i'm adding some comment like this this code does not uh, add a socket connection so if you are writing something for a junior developer you can add an explanation also that which cause a leak to the file descriptor because socket is bound to the address no other address will be able to bind to the same address once it is occupied right so another examples like uh, you can use a please use the close method to close the connections these are really helpful when somebody is reading it and somebody let's say if you are somebody is putting a wrong variable name and not following the standard then you can do something like this i think it would help me to have more expressive variable names that gives a real feeling real variable names instead of just putting any random variable names so these were just some examples which you can follow uh, to make your review better so here instead of this i think uh, now we you can just put a something like this for these variables i think it would uh, i think we can uh, follow the standard here these variables in the env same as others and can be picked up from runtime configuration i mean that's for a junior developer but uh, we already know that this can be managed in uh, environment variable instead of uh, hard coding it like this okay other than that let me find these are all the const so all the constant constant should be put in one file okay i'm just trying to find okay these are the details okay ta -ta 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 -ta. so these i mean these are the verbose messages which we put for the debugging right it's restaurant so we need to make sure that this is matching with the the verbose message you put for the debug statement i'm just looking for any other okay we are putting the validation pipes everything is correct authorization header is there so here you need to check that okay the api is responding the proper types in the response or not is it returning a proper status code 201 it is consuming the form data so that is correct instead of so you can also add a logger here that uh, it, it's better if we can log these errors at the api level so this can be the comment here now let's try to see what we do we have here so here you can see that this is something we are doing a two line statement but it can be done in a one line we can return this directly from here right this can be another uh, statement same as here until unless you are actually trying to log something you can do it otherwise you can just use a one liner okay it's like a very big pr i'm just trying to put uh, give some idea okay here size zero it's hard coded right that's not correct because i already know this code so i'm just reading it a little fast but here you can actually put a particular types return response here prisma service s3 module i will just try to talk about some more examples if i have this is where we are bootstrapping the module some test cases some files so these are just an example of how the code review should happen we should be following the the proper variable names uh, i can talk about some of the variable names here which like, let's say this is the this is the function name function name should start with the lower characters and then uh, you can you follow the camel casings right parse config parse db config because it is doing a database parsing it is parsing config from environment this is the the master function here and other than that like bootstrap function name, if i put random function name async function in it or initialize and bootstrap these are relevant 
but if you try to add some function which doesn't looks like initializing the application then it feels uh, it doesn't look correct correct right similarly create document here this function can be create document or you can say uh, initialize the api spec doc or something like that you can add i will try to show more examples uh, here so here console.log statement we uh, either if you use a proper logging statement you don't know you don't need this and try to add the proper typings here if you can ac extract the request typing it's a express request and here you are doing a request dot cookies access token that's fine here again we are hard coding the environment variables right so most of the cases you will always find because these can be configured in the environment variable the what is the queue name and what is the url to which you are going to connect to your service and ta -ta -ta, what else uh, i'm just trying to find any more errors in my own code these are dto's uh, we won't find much in the dto's here uh, what else we can do here total amount is zero and then we are reassigning using for each and putting these so these can be the standard constants or enum like the payment status can be enum order status can be enum so we will be following the enum instead of putting these double quote string so this can be an initial this can be the nice feedback okay just have a proper enums placed so we can have a proper status not random string you can assign and these proxy middleware because in uh, while deploying this application we will be using uh, the actual dev and staging endpoint so target can be decided based on the environment not just hard coded string this is this works fine on the local but what if i'm doing it on the dev and production so based on the environment we should be able to identify the target endpoint so that's another uh, feedback i can add okay the the comment can be like okay uh, please have a target uh, runtime we can decide the target runtime based on the the staging uh, based on the node env if it is dev place the dev endpoint production endpoint or configure it somewhere else okay these are all this is how the the code review should be done